One of, one of her assignments years ago as uh, Day Trips with Dora, I think that was uh, uh, the title that we had. And Dora decided that um, she wanted to go to Mount Dora. So she drove over there in that beat up little red Mazda of hers. Sorry. It was. And uh, on the way back on Interstate 4, this huge dump truck just totaled Dora's car. And we thought, OMG. Well, it wasn't long, just a couple days later, in spite of what happened to the car, bruised up, beat up, Dora was back at work. You know? And I always loved to watch Dora at the Kiwanis Club when she was trying to round up all those old guys for photos. Man, could she boss them around, all these generals and CEOs, and she'd tell them, you stand here, you stand there. Little Dora, they would do exactly what she said. <laughs> we want to thank you for bonding all of us together here in this beautiful island community. You made a difference in this world, and you made a difference in our world. Cheers to Dora. Cheers. Instead, I'm going to thank all of you, all at the same time. How about that? And first, I'm going to say thanks especially to Matt and Lisa for keeping me on the Observer staff as long as they did, and for arranging this wonderful event, and also to Ralph and Claire who started it all. Now, let's go back to seeing you all out there. The reason I stayed 25 years is because of all of you. And I look out here and I see faces, and I can put something to every face I see out there. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I see a face in there. I'll put it down. Um, I see a familiar face out here, and that is H. Terrell Griffin, better known as Terry. Now, I told about the people I meet and what kept me here. I met Terry. I used to go to Tiny Bar once in a while, it was open, and there's a fellow named my Miles Lovett who kept saying, you got to read my friend's book. And uh, Miles was going to him his fifth beer, and I said, no, 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 it's okay, Miles. <laughs> well, one day Miles came in and saw me here, and he went, he had a... <laughs> 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 okay, okay. <laughs> And this gentleman said, Miles, here's a book, read it. It's a black Lucy's notebook. It was long book, blues. I said, hmm, okay. Well, he brought the book. I read the book, and the book was uh, full of uh, local scenes, local characters, and so forth. And it was a good read. And I want you to know that in the time I've known Cherry, he's now in his sixth or seventh book, which is amazing. And also, because his penchant for putting local characters in, I want you to know, I finally made one of his books. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in a whole chapter in collateral damage. But don't get excited, I'm in two pages. <laughs> um, another thing, too, looking for stories, I heard there was a gentleman here that was the president of Standard & Poor. Now, that, that's a good story. But what do I know about Standard & Poor? Nothing. And he happened to be Kip O'Neill's husband, Leo O'Neill. And so I managed to get myself an invite to one of Kip's Christmas parties. It wasn't hard to do it, you know. So I get I'm going to I'm going to this party. I'm going to chase out this man, see what he looks like. But I met him, and he said, I think he's doable. So I made an arrangement. I met, met him, and I told him frankly, I didn't know about Standard and Poor, but we had a good interview. And I found later, after we had the story, uh, I found it was framed in his house. And he also sent me a note and said that he liked my interview better than Dan Rather's. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame him. Dan probably asked more embarrassing questions. <laughs> now, there's other... These are, then